Let's talk about the polar vortex. It might sound scary, but it may not be the winter villain you think it is. Think of the vortex as a giant rubber band around the North Pole, about 10 to 30 miles up in the stratosphere. When the winds up there are strong, that band stays tight and circular, and in that state, the coldest Arctic air stays locked near the pole. But when those winds weaken, the band loses its strength, and like a well-worn rubber band, it's no longer perfectly tight and circular. Instead, it can bend and stretch. Now, that doesn't mean the cold air fully escapes. It just has room to move farther because the band is now loose and flexible. But add in sudden stratospheric warming. That's one of the most common triggers of polar vortex disruption, and it's like giving the rubber band a sharp, forceful yank. If the jolt is strong enough, the band, like a stretched out rubber band, can warp and distort its circular shape, stretching in ways that allow Arctic air to move into regions it normally wouldn't reach. Here's the key part. Once the band is weakened or deformed, the jet stream becomes the gatekeeper, or essentially the hand tugging on it. That decides where the displaced cold air actually goes. So the polar vortex isn't the lawn villain, it's just the rubber band in the background. The real story is how the winds, jet stream, and stratospheric warming can stretch, bend, or even snap that band, shaping where or even whether winter stays calm or turns chaotic.